It has come to light that before an F-22 Raptor stealth fighter shot down the balloon with an AIM-9X Sidewinder missile off the coast of South Carolina, a key American asset was monitoring it. The U.S. Air Force's U-2S Dragon Lady spy planes were among the assets tapped to examine and collect intelligence on the Chinese surveillance balloon. As per reports, two U-2S Dragon Lady using the call signs Dragon 01 and Dragon 99 were pressed into action. Viewers may note that as per public disclosure, the Dragon Lady is the only aircraft in U.S. military inventory that can fly persistently at altitudes greater than that which the balloon was flying, which was about 65,000 feet. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why U-2S Dragon Lady monitored the Chinese balloons. Let's get started. After World War II, the U.S. military desired better strategic aerial reconnaissance to help determine Soviet capabilities and intentions. Into the 1950s, the best intelligence the American government had on facilities deep inside the Soviet Union were German Luftwaffe photographs taken during the War of Territory west of the Ural Mountains. So overflights to take aerial photographs of the Soviet Union began. After 1950, Soviet air defenses aggressively attacked all aircraft near the country's borders, sometimes even those over Japanese airspace, and existing reconnaissance aircraft Primarily bombers converted for reconnaissance duty, such as the Boeing RB-47, were vulnerable to anti-aircraft artillery, missiles, and fighters. It was thought that an aircraft that could fly at 70,000 feet or 21,300 meters would be beyond the reach of Soviet fighters, missiles, and radar. The highest flying aircraft available to America and its allies at the time was the English Electric Canberra, which could reach 48,000 feet or 14,600 meters. A new aircraft was mauled. The USAF decided to solicit designs only from smaller aircraft companies that could give the project more attention. Under the codename Bald Eagle, it gave contracts to Bell Aircraft, Martin Aircraft, and Fairchild Engine and Airplane to develop proposals for the new reconnaissance aircraft. Officials at Lockheed Aircraft Corporation heard about the project and decided to submit an unsolicited proposal. This became the inception point of U-2. The Lockheed U-2, nicknamed Dragon Lady, is a single-jet engine, ultra-high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft operated by the United States Air Force and previously flown by the Central Intelligence Agency CIA. It provides day and night high altitude 70,000 feet or 21,000 meters all weather intelligence gathering. Lockheed Corporation originally proposed it in 1953 and was approved in 1954 and its first test flight was in 1955. It was flown during the Cold War over the Soviet Union, China, Vietnam, and Cuba. Furthermore, U-2s have taken part in the post-Cold War conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq and supported several multinational NATO operations. The U-2 has also been used for electronic sensor research, satellite calibration, scientific research, and communications purposes. The Dragon Lady is one of a handful of aircraft types to have served the USAF for over 50 years, such as the Boeing B-52 and Boeing KC-135. The newest models, TR-1, U-2R, and U-2S, entered service in the 1980s, and the latest model, the U-2S, had a technical upgrade in 2012. The mission of the U-2 is to provide intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities in order to meet combatant commander objectives. The U-2 is capable of gathering a variety of imagery, including multispectral electro-optic, infrared, and synthetic aperture radar products that can be stored or sent to ground exploitation centers. 
In addition, it also supports high resolution, broad area synoptic coverage provided by the optical bar camera, producing traditional film products which are developed and analyzed after landing. Despite several mooted retirements in the last 30 years, U-2 is going strong and will be flying in the foreseeable future. Though it's one of the oldest types of airplanes in the inventory of the U.S. Air Force, it's investing more than $50 million to keep them flying. The latest instruments and sensors are packed in the aircraft, many of them are totally classified. Some known upgrades include new optical and thermal cameras, radar systems, air sampling instruments, radio frequency sensors, data collecting software and communication systems. It's important to understand that today's systems are generally a lot smaller, hence a lot more can be accommodated in the same space. The U-2's high altitude capability, adaptable design and relatively low development cost have enabled it to be deployed for a new role. It's set to become a vital node in an ambitious network called the Advanced Battle Management System, which will connect weapons and sensors in space, at sea, underwater, in the air and on land. A debris field about 1,500 meters by 1,500 meters spread out across shallow waters six miles off the coast is being checked. The USS Carter Hall is on the scene categorizing debris along with the USNS Pathfinder, a ship that is capable of conducting oceanographic, hydrographic and bathymetric surveys of the ocean floor. As per reports, once the debris are collected, they will be sent to an FBI processing lab in Quantico, Virginia. There is some news that the balloon may have contained explosives meant for self-destruction indicating that it likely had a spying system. With wide array of sensors, a U-2S could soak up any electronic emissions that the balloon might have been sending out. The ability of the U-2 to get above the balloon is critical for a number of reasons. Examining it from a top-down perspective using various sensors could provide additional intelligence as to its design and capabilities. Being above it would also position it right in the path between the balloon and the satellites it may be trying to communicate with, enabling it to collect a lot of information. If required, the U-2S could potentially jam any communications being sent to satellites, leveraging its highly capable electronic warfare suite. It is likely that the inputs received from U-2S would play a critical role in determining what the balloon was actually doing and how the US will take this up with China. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.